So greetings. Um, good to be um, and uh, to be with you all. Uh, and this is one of Cryptarium's uh, regular updates on our business. We try to be as transparent as possible, uh, particularly uh, um, in such a fast growing uh, space and fast growing business. So I'm Stephen, um, I'm the CEO um, and uh, Austin, the COO and myself uh, basically alternate uh, giving these updates. So great to be here today. Um, just to let you know that I cannot see any of the questions that might be coming through on the live stream, but our marketing team uh, will handle those offline and uh, answer you offline. So um, I'm not able to see any of those questions or answer them uh, directly. So we have lots and lots of news, which is why this uh, live stream is slightly delayed. And um, what we'll be covering today is um, our FCA registration, which has finally happened. So just to go back through some of the background of that and what it means. Um, the um, great news we have in terms of uh, entering uh, the DeFi world um, and uh, wonderful earning opportunity uh, for our Cryptarium community um, around farming uh, CRPT tokens. We will then go through the great news um, already announced on, on Facebook and elsewhere about us listing on Gate.io, uh, which is one of the top, top four, depending on how you count it, uh, exchanges. Um, and then we'll go through the business performance where uh, particularly with our recent Cedars fundraising, fundraising uh, we're being very transparent about how and where we make our money. And uh, uh, last but uh, not least, uh, we will then go through uh, customer service um, a few months ago, I was on this live stream talking about um, how we were not very happy about our customer service, which was also the case, obviously, with you as our customers, how we put a lot of effort into that. Um, and uh, you can, um, we can definitely see uh, the improvements. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that and, and some of the figures that demonstrate um, the improvements. So lots of news, excited to be here. Um, and just on a personal note, I've now been a CEO for, for three years at Cryptarium and um, at the end of November. And uh, it's been an extraordinary period of growth, um, moving from a relatively simple mobile app, but with a very clear mission always uh, to make it as easy to use uh, crypto as it would be in everyday banking, for example. Um, and we continue with that mission and we've broadened that mission I think um, in the B2B environment, which we'll talk about, but now also in, in the DeFi environment. Um, so I think huge changes and you know really proud to have uh, hundreds of thousands of registered users across uh, most of the globe where crypto is, is permitted um, and to continue to be growing the business uh, and expanding into exciting new areas. So regulation, regulation is something that we increasingly have to live with in the in the crypto space. And in the last two years, we have seen um, a lot of developments in this. So um, in Europe, AML 5D or the Anti-Money Laundering 5 Directive, which the UK has followed, um, was the opportunity for the FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, um, to, to create a regime for cryptocurrency companies. And basically, um, any cryptocurrency company which wants to um, fully operate within the UK um, has to register. And uh, we started that process uh, when uh, we were asked to, which was basically uh, 18 months ago. We had a window um, starting from uh, January 2020 when AML 5D came into effect. Uh, Brexit has changed everything, though, really, for the UK regime. So um, UK financial services companies lost the ability to passport across the EU. Um, and even the equivalents sort of comes to an end um, through 2022. And the advice that we have been given legally is that is not so clear, but it's most likely that if we did want to exist um, within the UK and provide crypto services to UK citizens, uh, we were going to have to register. We obviously already have a full registration with a number of licenses in Estonia, uh, but we decided that we would apply uh, for UK registration. 
So as I said, we started in April 2020. Um, the process is as rigorous, as broad as applying for full EMI license, um, which we had looked at previously and we had gone through all that paperwork. Um, and so we've had to submit um, numerous um, uh, pieces of evidence of our compliance procedures, our ownership, our technology infrastructure, our partners, um, all of our out, main outsourced um, contracts um, and many more things besides. So a very, very rigorous, in-depth process, uh, looking at all aspects of our business, all aspects of how we follow compliance, um, how we follow regulation. Um, over 200 companies applied. Um, and we received um, in person almost by, by video from the FCA uh, responsible party our approval on the 4th of October. We are only the 13th company in the UK to receive uh, the appropriate crypto registration. So we think that's lucky number 13. Um, I think number 14 happened in the last week. But it does show you, um, and you know, there's quite a few large companies still on that list, still under temporary registration, not yet fully registered, names like Revolut, for example. Um, so we feel that we have demonstrated um, our uh, rigor, the amount of effort um, and investment we make in ensuring that um, we onboard customers in a good way, identifying them, that we follow all the right procedures in terms of fraud um, and anti-money laundering. Um, you know, we have satisfied the FCA of all of that um, and we have our registration. So uh, we're, we're very happy that we have that. Um, and I think it's a, it's a good, um, you know, approval, um, brand recognition uh, for the effort that we make as a company to operate in the best ways possible. So, um, and uh, we may in future also try to uh, register in other jurisdictions as, as and when needed. But uh, for the moment, we have the Estonia license and the UK license, um, and that is um, really uh, great. Um, in regards, um, so there we are, first from the first companies to be registered for crypto activity in the UK and a picture of what's meant to be Big Ben, I think. So good news and um, something that will enable us to operate uh, more freely in the UK. The next one is obviously we have through the years uh, introduced new products, new services, but always with this mission of being making it really to e easy to use uh, uh, crypto. The DeFi space has exploded uh, since late last year um, and allows really um, sort of arbitrage and matching of funds um, to enable uh, yield. And um, our big offer, we're working with Uniswap, which is one of the, the biggest um, uh, DeFi marketplaces, um, is, is to access this type of yield. So DeFi really in a huge growing trend um, we have uh, wholesale players, you know, big investment banks operating this space as well as individuals. Quite difficult today to operate as an individual in this space. Very, very technical, um, very, um, very difficult to understand in many ways. The volumes are exploding. Uniswap is one of the biggest, if not the biggest uh, DeFi marketplace. Um, and we have reached an agreement with them um, around um, CRPT tokens um, and um, m allowing uh, our CRPT token holders to basically um, now access, access a, a, a DeFi um, liquidity farming program. The details are on our website, um, but it's uh, uh, up to a 90% yield on an annual basis. Um, obviously, that um, therefore is um, different if we're you know, holding tokens for one or, or two months. Um, the offer is through to uh, December. Um, and um, to be able to take advantage of the offer, you have to put in um, equal amounts of CRPT, and then we um, work out how much USDT. So this is both sides um, of the liquidity farm. So to enable the liquidity farming to take place. Um, initially, um, there will be a 
3% fee, although that is um, returned at the end of the process. Um, and basically, you, you are staking uh, the CRPT USDT through a smart contract, which um, is uh, enabled through our app. Um, <clears throat> it's a, a profitable way. Uh, to invest uh, your, your crypto, uh, here CRPT tokens. Um, easy way uh, to get some interest and yield in what is generally a very yield, yield, low yield environment. Um, you don't need any of the normal equipment you need to do crypto staking. And obviously it's much more environmentally friendly than a crypto farming. Um, and um, as I said, the offer is open through, I think, um, uh, something like the 3rd of December. Uh, also, all the details are on the website, um, and I shall certainly be taking advantage of this. Um, the uh, you know just having it in for a month or two, uh, you get at least I think something like seven seven and a half percent interest, uh, which is double or triple what you get on an annual basis in the traditional um, fiat world. So we're very excited uh, to be able to have this first program. It'll be the first of many. Um, and we feel that we are really fulfilling our mission to make it easy uh, and accessible um, for uh, cryptocurrency usage, um, particularly in this new and expanding world of, of DeFi. So really, really exciting. And hopefully also will, as we come on to in a minute, uh, make the CRPT token um, even more valuable, uh, given that it now has access to this type of facility. Um, and all the details are there on our, on our website and also um, uh, through Uniswap. Uh, one of the uh, main uh, requests, maybe even complaints, um, of our token holders has been, well, you're not in many um, you're not on many exchanges and, you know, please, 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 um, how can we make sure that we have more liquidity so that CRPT um, utility token becomes more and more valuable? So we are now listed on gate.io, uh, which is one of the top five, top 10, top um, uh, exchanges, depending on how you count it. Um, and that is with immediate effects. So now we are available on uh, Qcoin, on HitBTC, uh, Gate.io, Uniswap, which would also count in some ways as sort of a, a exchange, um, and Liquid. And um, we think this is really going to be uh, beneficial for the overall liquidity, um, as well as the price for CRPT. And this is in conjunction with our already announced burning program. So the price today of uh, CRPT is 35 cents. Um, that is almost double of where it was a year ago. And uh, we can also see uh, trading volumes picking up um, as the, the token becomes more widely available. We create more liquidity um, and we continue to create more value for CIPT, um, both through our uh, app and normal crypto facilities, but uh, as, as mentioned before, through providing things like DeFi. Um, and at the same time in the background, uh, burning um, a large percentage, um, up to 30% of the supply of CRPT. So these are all, we feel, um, very tangible actions um, to help us um, drive the price um, of, um, of CRPT and make it more valuable for all our token holders. Um, so um, great uh, news. Um, and on the, in the meantime, we continue to work uh, with getting ourselves on other large exchanges um, and that news um, will be announced in the coming months. So we hope to have more news for you in this space, uh, but the great news already in terms of Gate IO. Moving on to um, our business performance um, and uh, here, um, we the progress is great uh, we've talked before about the dynamics of our business and uh, growing um, particularly with our cedars uh, fundraising we've become much more transparent about where and how we make our money and that um, i will go through more of that today so this is an overview of where we ended up uh, by the end of the third quarter um, so um, let's see how we did so first of all how do we make our money and um, the uh, round circles on the left show you a share, share of all transactions and share of total revenue. 
um, and on the right we have um, average uh, value per transaction. So as you can see on the left, uh, blockchain transactions, um, so basically uh, within um, the um, within the uh, app, um, is makes up about forty eight percent of of all of our transactional volume. Exchange um, is another twenty percent. Um, cards, so our Visa uh, Europe card, um, makes up the rest of the transactional volume. So. Um, card pay in, card pay out, um, depositing uh, on the card um, and everything that is surrounding the card which is there to help on ramp and off ramp. And then obviously we now have the IBAN facility and deposits now make up 8% um, uh, um, of uh, the card, um, of, the, of the transactional volume. Total revenue looks slightly different, um, and as we'll see on the next page, this depends a little bit um, on our uh, partners and to what extent they take margin, um, and also um, the, the sort of uh, size of the transaction and volume. And uh, total revenues, the card fees, so obviously we do pay, uh, there is a, a, a card subscription fee, depending on the level of, of card services that you get, um, makes up at about a third of our revenues. Um, exchange um, makes up roughly another third. And then card pay in, pay out um, makes up the remaining third. So quite well spread. Um, as we uh, move to uh, introducing our US card uh, late this year, early next year with Cascade, uh, we would hope that the card transactions and card fee uh, revenues will, will increase even further as, we, as US um, crypto um, CRPT um, <clears throat> as community will be able to then sign up and access um, a Visa card in the US, which we think is extremely exciting and we've talked about a number of times before. In terms of trends, um, the average value per transaction um, has remained relatively steady. Um, it tends to go up when the exchange activity goes up. So when we saw those big spikes in um, Bitcoin price, for example, early in the year, um, our volumes go up and the average transaction uh, value tends also to go up at the same time. But also I think you know what's interesting here is it shows that that um, core mission of allowing um, easy usage, easy access to crypto for the average retail customer, uh, you know that's the space we're in. This is not tens of thousands. this is easy to use um, for um, you know, um, the average uh, consumer who is interested in, in crypto, who wants to experiment with crypto, who wants to um, invest and, and, and uh, even play around with crypto. The uh, value per income generating transaction, so a number of our transactions will not be uh, value generating, um, is uh, slightly higher. And then um, the average revenue per income generating transaction, so a subset of a subset, is about 5.2 euros, which is, 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 is not bad. Um, and as you can see, again, that um, color relates very much to uh, the transaction size. So if the transaction size on average is higher, uh, then we tend to make um, more in terms of the exchange commission. But um, uh, good trends, um, and we're very happy as to where the business is heading. Um, so again, um, if we look at um, on the right is the best way of, of looking at this. Um, the fee retained by us versus um, by our partners. So blockchain transfers within the app, obviously uh, that is all, all the revenue is retained by us. Um, exchange, um, we depend on a number of exchanges at the back end, whether it's people like Kraken or Liquid, um, to help us make those um, changes um, across across platforms um, and you know to, to other wallet addresses. Um, so there is uh, some taking of revenues there by those back-end exchanges. Card maintenance fees, so our card provider in Europe um, charges a whole set of fees in terms of um, the card maintenance uh, because they provide many of the service elements like uh, the call center, chargeback and all the rest, so they take 
um, a large chunk of, of the card fees. Um, and the same there for card pay in and card pay out, they take a chunk of those fees. So you, you can see that we don't return chain all of the revenues. Um, and for us, the exchange and uh, blockchain transfer transactions are the most prof profitable. And uh, therefore, we can see uh, to the left um, the uh, repeat of what we saw on the previous page of the revenue by product type. Um, but then when you translate that down to gross profit, the uh, picture looks very different. So uh, obviously, exchange, uh, we're making a lot more money. Um, than we do uh, from the card uh, fees, despite the fact um, that the transaction volumes um, and revenues are fairly equal. Uh, we hope that uh, over time, particularly as we expand the car program into the US and new markets, uh, this should equalize out because the volumes in the car business will go up um, and the exchange volumes uh, we would expect to, to grow, continue to grow, uh, but maybe not to the same uh, the same extent. Uh, so um, that's the dynamics of our business, to be very uh, transparent and open. Um, and um, uh, we continue to want to expand uh, both programs on the exchange side um, and on the card side, uh, with things like uh, the DeFi program really helping us on the core crypto business. If we look at the trends then of total revenues and gross profit, um, we can see that total revenue um, is um, growing uh, year on year. It has been growing. It fell slightly in the third quarter, um, I think, as um, the crypto prices subsided. Um, but uh, roughly speaking, we're making um, you know, a, a million a quarter in revenues. Um, and the blue line, the blue bar chart on the top uh, line is our, our gross costs, which show, then leads to gross profit on the bottom line. Uh, I don't think the blue chart on the, the blue um, bar on the bottom line uh, represents anything in particular, uh, but you can see the critical figure of our gross profit um, growing uh, quarter by quarter. And there's something that is really um, inputting to that, and that is the success in our B2B business. So uh, we had um, eight new B2B partners in Q3. Um, we charge, as you would expect, an onboarding fee. There's a lot of work for us in the background in terms of technology, um, integration, tailoring of the program. Um, and um, we uh, gained about half a million in terms of total on euros, total onboarding fees from those partners in Q3. And um, we see this uh, growing um, uh, hugely. Um, we expect to have up to 3,000 active users um, in the B2B program by end of year three, based on the sort of linear growth that we've been having um, over the last year and onwards. Um, and there is a revenue share uh, on the platform fee. So it's very much a partnership arrangement where we split um, the, uh, the fees and what we make with our B2B partner. And the lifetime value we, uh, we calculate of a B2B partner is about 400,000 uh, euros. So that's the lifetime value, um, which would be um, around 3 million for all the uh, B2B partners that we've onboarded up to the end of Q3. So a very healthy revenue stream there where Austin has shown before the number of users that we are gaining uh, in the B2B space uh, because obviously they bring with them their consumers um, versus the direct to consumer um, space. So we still see this as a, a major um, opportunity for us. Uh, we seem to be fairly unique in the space um, and a continuing uh, revenue driver for Cryptarium as a whole as we access many more consumers through our B2B partners. Moving and shifting gear a little bit, uh, one of our concerns was that uh, we grew so fast getting up to 400,000 registered users that um, our infrastructure at the back end uh, was not really uh, keeping track. And this is not unusual in the fintech space. Um, I think this happens, has happened to many fast growing fintech companies. 
And um, what we have been doing is on two fronts, basically, uh, to improve our service. First of all, uh, the sort of bugs um, and problems that actually were happening within the app, which were creating customer service issues. We've been trying to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to iron them out. Um, and as a result, actually, some of our product introductions have been much slower than they would have been previously because we wanted to fix the basics. So we spent a lot of effort on a lot of man days, a lot of money, just trying to make sure that the app itself, in terms of speed, um, in terms of errors, um, in terms of messaging, is much simpler, much easier uh, to use. And we don't have some of the issues um, operationally that we had before. And the second is we have invested a lot in our customer service uh, infrastructure. So now special um, service channel. Um, we no longer do servicing through Telegram. Uh, we have a, a special service chat. Um, investing in staff um, and investing in a whole program um, of service improvement. And you can see here how that, um, as we move from the left to right, has really improved in both the time to first contact, uh, which was um, you know up to ten minutes, up to you know or eleven minutes um, late uh, last year. Um, uh, actually, even this is even by um, by uh, month here uh, by date um, is really improving as we went through September and we saw initiatives um, kicking in and really um, improving the time to first contact. And that, that has continued to be the case as we've gone through October and November. So first of all, time to first contact, you don't have to hang around, um, which is leading to less missed chats as well. Um, and um, you can see the number of the volume of chats there, 6,000, and that's been growing exponentially. And then the average duration, so that the amount of time to fix um, this hasn't come down quite so quickly, but the fact that we are now able to do it within um, sort of 15 as opposed to 20 to 30 minutes um, shows that resolution is becoming uh, uh, quicker and better. And um, on our customer voice, um, the web widget, um, the customer satisfaction has now reached 81.5%, which would be equal to, maybe not better, as many best of breed uh, banking apps. So. We think that the indicators are going in all the right directions. Um, the fact that uh, Austin and I personally have less um, service issues to handle, less disgruntled customers, um, also I think uh, really proves that this investment and concerted effort is having, having um, an impact. And we can see that also when it comes to financial crime. So um, you know, part of our FCA registration showed that we had very robust processes around transactions that might uh, need further review, um, that uh, might, in the first instance, uh, raise red flags about um, is this the customer, um, is this uh, you know a, a credible transaction. So um, we spend a lot of effort in this space, um, and we can see here again in a number of instances, a couple of thousand, um, and. Um, what the uh, closure was. So we had 91% um, of customers we interacted with around protecting you, protecting your identity, protecting your transactions. 91% uh, of you came out saying that you were satisfied, 7% um, positive, and then just a small 3% as negative. Um, so 97% satisfaction on our um, closure of service issues which were around potential financial crime. So again, we've spent a lot of effort there and um, we're starting to see um, the fruits of that um, in terms of uh, not just being rigorous in the way that a regulator like the FCA would expect us to do, but resolving them in ways to customer satisfaction, uh, which is what you expect us to do. Finally, um, as we now know, the Cedars fundraising has been closed, um, and in the end, it was about uh, 3.2 million euros, I think, um, and uh, a few thousand investors, uh, of which some were significant investors. And we are on track now to um, do all those things that we committed uh, to people within the Cedars uh, fundraising um, round. So um, you had the prize draw um, during the last uh, live stream with Austin. Um, your unique shareholder badge um, will appear in the Cryptarium app um, and uh, cashback. 
um, availability. Um, and uh, there is going to be a, a closed chat uh, group, which we have sent out invitations to for all our CEDAs uh, shareholders. The remaining perks in terms of, of tokens and benefits um, will be rolled out um, in the next couple of quarters. Um, and uh, we hope to have delivered all of those perks by uh, January 2022. And uh, again, um, for your Christmas um, to enjoy, we are going to be sending out the perks that were branded um, Crypterium merchandise. Um, we're attempting to do that by Christmas, so you can give all your friends and family, uh, if you invested a lot through the Cedars Fund round, um, the, uh, the wonderful uh, Crypterium uh, merchandise and things like t-shirts and mugs and all the rest. So um, that also will be coming your way and, and is the perfect Christmas present for, for your loved ones. So um, then uh, the, um, the uh, Cedars um, 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 <coughs> investors uh, you will get your own uh, sort of updates, um, financial updates, um, and be able to participate in uh, your thoughts around our future direction and all the rest through the closed chat. So, so lots of news, um, and um, uh, to reiterate, you know, where are we? Where are we? So, um, FCA registration, um, lucky number thirteen in terms of our crypto uh, registration approval. Uh, great news, I think a, a, a real um, stamp of approval um, on the rigor that we run our business with and certainly what we do around compliance fraud, um, the way we run our technology infrastructure um, and the sort of partners and arrangements we have with partners. Um, the uh, DeFi um, liquidity farming, um, offer open now, um, go to our website, go to the app, um, sign up. Um, you'll be able to stake in a way that is really not possible uh, directly, um, the uh, Uniswap uh, liquidity uh, mining, um, so uh, CRPT tokens um, matched with USDT um, and um, the equivalent of 90% um, APY um, and that offer going through to December. And we think that's very exciting and continues to fulfill our mission of making it easy and accessible um, to use crypto in the same way that you'd expect um, from your everyday bank. Um, liquidity, we talked about, so Gate.io, a, a top 10 exchange, um, and uh, now our availability on a number of exchanges, um, including Qcoin, HitBTC, Uniswap, Liquid, Gate.io, and we will continue and are continuing to work uh, to add more exchanges uh, to make CRPT um, even more liquid and more valuable. And then in terms of our business performance, um, good track, um, B2B continues to be very healthy, we continue to bring on uh, new consumers, um, and we have a nice uh, steady income flow from a variety of income sources. Um, and as we introduce new services, uh, new card programs, um, that will build um, and continue to, to build the business. And then a customer service, um, from uh, a lot of feedback from yourselves, concerted effort uh, on the app and making sure we get rid of all the bugs and operational issues um, and putting a lot more effort and, and um, time and resources into our service proposition. Uh, we're getting to where we want to be uh, with an 81.5% um, satisfaction on the web, um, which is pretty um, best practice. And the same in the fraud side, you know, the friction that is created by regulation, we have to be there, we have to do it to satisfy our regulators, how we can resolve those issues as quickly as possible um, to satisfy you, our consumers. Uh, and then last but not least, um, completing and filling out uh, the CEDAS fundraising um, and getting uh, your benefits, perks and, and sort of community set up in that space. Uh, meantime, out there in the market, um, you know, lots of exciting things going on with the new EFT. Um, I'm sure more to follow. Um, mainstream players, whether it's uh, PayPal um, or Goldman Sachs or Fidelity, um, starting uh, to jump on board and uh, use crypto. Um, and we see that as as a huge opportunity. There's, um, you know, there's a pie there that is growing, and as more players um, come in because they see that it's a credible space, um, the more this becomes mainstream, uh, the more we see everybody uh, using uh, crypto. 
whether it's to gain yield um, or where appropriate um, to for payments. And the recent launch of the eNaira in uh, Nigeria and then the program they had around Bitcoin in El Salvador shows again that even um, you know, in developing markets, uh, crypto is seen as something very viable uh, to increase financial inclusion um, and make, um, as we've always said, things like payments frictionless and, and lower cost than, and faster uh, than the traditional financial services systems. So we are plows, pr pl pleased and proud um, to be um, one of the uh, early players in this space uh, and to continue um, to um, forge um, a great path. Um, so um, more news to come in uh, the coming months um, and um, very much enjoyed um, updating you. As I said, uh, if you have any question, questions or comments, um, they will appear in the Facebook uh, chat uh, and our marketing and service teams uh, will answer those um, as appropriate. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much for being our customers or part of our community, whether through Cedars or through, through owning CRPT tokens. Um, great to be on the journey with you. So um, very good day to you. Um, and um, yeah, look forward to uh, continuing to update with you news. Uh, so, bye and thank you.